Yeah. Last year when you came in, we called it the Kimberella story, you know, big surprise. This year, expectations were much higher as the second seed. Did you feel that? And what were those expectations? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, when I started my U.S. Summer, um, the U.S. Open was, uh, you know, my main goal and, and um, was a new situation for me as well, going back to a Grand Slam where I was actually defending my title for the first time. Um, you know, not having been able to do that in 2006 was frustrating at the time. So, um, you know, it was probably a lot more busy this, this year around um, than it was last year. Um, in a different way. Um, last year it was, uh, you know, it was a different kind of attention. You know, people were still curious to see how I was, see how I was playing, and um, and obviously now, you know, people knew that obviously with my history here, um, that I was maybe one of the contenders. And um, but to me, like I've said um, to you guys, you know, every press conference, um, you know, every every tournament, you know, have to go match match by match, and, and um, upsets can happen in the beginning of the tournament. Um, and you know I wasn't playing my best tennis you know when I wanted to in the beginning but I was able to lift my game um, in the last two you know the last two matches when I needed it to so uh, that's obviously what I'm probably the most pleased about over these last you know 14 days is that I was able to do that um, Obviously, she's still young. She's two and a half, so um, I don't think to her it matters too much um, whether I win or lose. Still, um, so um, you know, it's just nice. I mean, it's it's nice to uh, to have her a part of it. But uh, like I said, I don't think to her it matters at all. Um, no, I mean, you know, I like the the innocence of you know of her still, and um, um, you know, they they express their emotions in such a natural, pure way that um, you know. I don't have to, I mean, she sees a trophy and she knows, okay, with a trophy is a part of winning, so she kind of connects the dots like that, but nothing, um, I'm not going to go tell her, mommy won the US Open, no, you know, I don't care. Um, no, 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 I mean, she doesn't need to, like. Kim, can you? Kim. Oh. Is you okay? Okay. I hate that one. Okay. Um, just if, you know, Vera was having you know, such a such a strong run at this tournament, playing so well, and it's playing so well coming in. And and I know the last couple times she faced you, she she, she beat you. Yeah. Um, I I won't say a lot of people were surprised you beat her tonight, but but in such a dominating fashion, um, did that surprise you a little bit? Um. I mean, I kind of knew getting into the match, you know, which which the things were that I didn't do well in those two matches that I that I lost to, and obviously the one at Wimbledon was, um, to me, like I said before, one of the most disappointing losses that I've dealt with so far in my career. Um, so in a way, you know, I was excited to play her in the final here just to try and get that revenge, but um, I also learned a lot of things, and and just not myself. I think you know, you know, my coach by you know watching her, you know, me lose against her. Um, you know, we, we picked up a few little things that kind of um, helped me out there today as well, and uh, which was kind of just mixing up my game a little more. She's a type of player who is consistent and, and who likes the pace and who likes to take over the pace from the opponents. And um, I think today I was able to just, you know, mix it up well and um, just, you know, stay calm during the rally as well, but still, you know, put enough pressure and, and, and variety in there, you know, throwing up some higher balls here and there. And, um, and I think that just got her, yeah, thinking even more, um, just besides the fact that she was probably thinking about, you know, the, the occasion and, um, you know, where she was playing and being in another final, but, um, you know, which is always something that does have an effect on the way that you feel, obviously, because she's been playing, you know, some incredible tennis in these last two Grand Slams so far, so it um, must be frustrating for her to not be able to play her best level, um, you know, when it was probably m most needed. She did say, just as a quick follow, she did say in here that, um, she needs to learn to pace herself better. That, that that perhaps there was some way that she could have, you know, I guess conserve some energy. To, you know, because she said she was she, she did not feel that she had her had her. No, pain. but again, um, obviously I was in a different situation a few years ago when I played my first Grand Slam finals. I was a little bit younger, so you know I think when you're younger it overwhelms you. Um, but you know she's had she's been on the tour for a long time and she's had some. Um, you know, played some big matches and, and beat a lot, of, a lot of, you know, really good players. 
but a Grand Slam Finals is still it's still something that you know is, is it, it, there's a different vibe, there's a different occasion, and it just it's bec becomes so much more important. And um, I told her too, you know, it took me five or six times before you know I won my first one, and I and I kn know exactly how she feels. Um, you know, that was probably one of the most frustrating things um, in my Grand Slam losses um, in the final that I wasn't able to give you know show my best tennis out there. Um, so I, and that's you know how she was feeling afterwards as well, what she told me. Kim, if you can just talk a little bit more about that. So when you're on court now and you've gone into your last three Grand Slam finals and played well, compare that to you know the times you were playing Justine, were you not embracing the occasion? Is yeah, that why but you weren't able to um, when you're younger, and I remember you know even the one against Capriati. I mean, I you know it just becomes it's the impact of of emotions is is so big um, and. I mean, some players are, you know, are able to just block it off and, and just focus, but I wasn't. I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I mean, just when I think back now on, on my, you know, first Grand Slam final, it's just so, there's not a lot of things that I remember, um, just because it was just so, yeah, emotional, but, but not able to, at that, you know, stage of my life, not able to, to place those emotions. And I think now that, I, you know, I'm able to do that a lot faster, and I also feel, okay, I still get nervous and I still you know, get that heavy arm, but I'm able to kind of control it better and, and to just, you know, yeah, not let it affect me in a way where, you know, my body is, is, is going down or, I, you know, where I'm not able to play the same kind of tennis that I want to play. Um, I mean, you know, Grand Slams are always tough. I mean, you have to, you know, stay focused throughout those whole seven matches, two weeks, and um, and it's not just the tennis. I mean, there's so much more involved around it. And obviously, you know, um, I'm very excited that I was able to defend my title, which is, um, it's always an honor to go back to a place, you know, especially Grand Slam where you've done well and, and where you've won, and you obviously want to um, bring your best tennis again. And, and I know, obviously, confidence-wise, I knew that, you know, if I would bring my best that I'm, I'm, I'm able, to, you know, uh, I'm capable of beating a lot of the top players, but, um, you know, I was just kind of <coughs> aiming for that. But to be honest, I mean, you know, I don't think it's been that long since Venus, um, you know, maybe in 2000, 2001 or so, where she, um, where she um, won back to back. But, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's also the last Grand Slam of the year. Um, the heat was a, f a factor in the beginning of the tournament. There's a lot of, I mean, little details that make a difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy that I was capable of, of repeating history. Uh, Kim, besides the mature, your ma maturity now, etc., uh, is there something about the atmosphere here or the surface here or something particular about this Grand Slam that seems yeah. to bring out the best in you? Uh, for sure. I mean, the surface is, has always been, you know, one of my favorite surfaces to play on. I um, also like the blue courts, which, you know, make it um, a lot easier for me to, to see on. Um, but I've always, not just here in New York, but I've always had a very good uh, good run in, in, you know, on the American hard courts. Even when I was younger, um, you know, the, the whole U.S. Open Series, Stanford, San Diego, L.A., those kind of mm -hmm. tournaments, I've, I've always had a a uh, pretty good record going there, so um, I have a natural, natural instinct of just adapting really <coughs> well to, um, you know, to the hard courts, and which you know doesn't come that easily for me when I go on on, on different surfaces. Kim, now that you have your your daughter, but you're also playing at such a, a high level, do you have an idea in your mind of how you want to balance going forward tennis and family, or how much longer you want to you know continue to play? I mean, um, I've said, you know, obviously I would like to keep it going until the Olympics, but um, then, then again, I mean, you never know what can happen, and, um, you know, injuries, I always, you know, I, my, main, my main goal is to try and, and just stay injury-free, and, and if I can do that, and if I can practice hard and work hard, um, you know, obviously, um, I mean, the Grand Slams will always be my focus, and, and um, so now that I'm playing well, obviously I'm not going to, you know, just give it up, I just want to keep it going, and, and as long as it's worth Balancing, and if it's able, if I'm able to balance it with the family, um, Jada's not obligated to go to school yet. So um, you know, obviously, it becomes a totally different story once um, you know it becomes mandatory.
Kim, did you uh, ever during the match sense that Vera was not playing her best tennis? And was it hard to focus? How did you maintain your aggressive play, seeing that she just wasn't playing her best? Um, I mean, you, you try not to let those kind of things go in, into your head. You try not to think about those things. I mean, I knew, I felt that I was hitting the ball well. And I kind of had you know, a good game plan. And, and I really wanted to just focus on that and not worry too much about kind of thinking that she wasn't playing well and then kind of just, you know, myself just taking it a little bit more easily. And um, so I was really just trying to stay focused. And cause just because of the, the last two matches that I lost to her, I both won the first sets by, by playing really well. And I just really wanted to um, step it up in that second set. And obviously that game at 3-1 in the second set where, um, you know, it was a longer game and, and was a very important game for me to win because, um, yeah, I, I just didn't give her that, that you know, small chance to get back into the match, and um, and that was obviously a big game. I think just for me to um, to just really finish it off there in that second set. You're a very caring person. How hard is that to do? Because you're you're very sensitive. On court, it's not hard. <laughs> this might be jumping ahead a little bit, but have you had time to think about your plans for the, the rest of the season in terms of your schedule? Um, no, to be honest, I haven't yet. Um, obviously, I think uh, for now, Beijing and. Um, is I think the only tournament that's that's left um, at the moment. I'm just excited to uh, to pack up my bags and, and go back to Belgium and uh, spend some time with my family there. Well, you mentioned the other surfaces. What are your expectations of yourself for the other majors, and to what degree do those motivate you? Um, I mean, they all motivate you in a in a different way. Obviously, um, you know, tactic wise, and and you always have to adjust a little bit to each and, and every single one of them. But I think the one where um, I've always felt that you know I can do better than I've had is is uh, obviously at the Australian Open. Similar surface, they've uh, they've gone away, I think, from the rebound ace in, in the last couple of years. So I've always um, enjoyed playing there, and and that's obviously a grand slam where I would like to do. Well. I mean, I want to do well in all of them, of course, and but. Um, Again, and then you have the two European Grand Slams, which, you know, obviously Wimbledon is, is the one where, you know, I'm close to and because I have the connection with my dad there because he enjoyed it there. So I, I always want to do well there as well. And then the French Open kind of feels like, yeah, playing in Belgium because we have so many Belgian people supporting us and, and we have the history of a lot of past Belgians who, who've done well there. So um, they all have a different impact on on the way that you feel, but all a positive impact, and I think that's something that um, I want to use, you know, when I go back there next year. Do you expect to win one of those? I would like to, uh, and I'll, I will try everything that I can to to be in the best shape possible to to try and achieve what I've achieved here. Kim, such a, a wonderful, delightful part of the Open last year was was Jade on court, and just totally amazed, and everyone was really taken by the entire experience. It's hard enough to parent under any circumstances, let, let alone in, in public eye. My question is, does she have any sense now that, that mom's different, that there, she's part of a no, different mom? No, no. I mean, to be honest, my dad was kind of in a similar situation because mm -hmm. he played soccer, you know, mostly in Belgium. But um, it was only, I think, until I got older and that I, you know, when I was about eight or ten years old, because you're just so used to. I mean, this is our lifestyle, and and you just become so used to it. So, um, to her, I mean, yeah, there's no difference. I mean, you know, she, this is what her her life is about, and um, I mean, it will t be, you know, a little different once she's, you know, starts going to school. But um, I mean, no, and I'm glad that way. You know, it just. Um, because there were moments when I was younger where I didn't like to have a famous parent. So, <laughs> you know, obviously uh, I'll try to um, protect her from that as much as possible. Kim, does your place in tennis history matter to you? And do you care if you go down as an all-time great? Um, I mean, it's not that I think about that, but maybe when I'm older and, and retired, I'm sure it, it's, um, it would be nice. But um, it's not that that's something that I'm trying to achieve once I'm out on court. Um, no, I don't think about that. Kim, you were talking the other day, I remember you said, made a comment about your Anna Ivanovic had come up and you had said how when, she, when you were not playing that you kept in touch with her and, and, and I spoke to her afterwards and she said how great you were that you texted her and gave her advice and so forth. And, you know, and then hearing you tonight with Vera, I mean, it seems to me very clear that, that you take great interest in a lot of the young players. Um, I mean, do you feel in a way like a like like you want to mentor them, and then also how do you, how do you kind of work that out when then then you have to go up and compete against them? Um, yeah, I mean Anna, um, especially I've been you know very close to um, over the last few years, and and she's been one of the players who um, 
you know, has always shown, a, you know, interest just, you know, outside of tennis. And I think that's something that I also like about her is, is um, you know, she's a really sweet girl. And, um, and you know, I mean, it's been, you know, frustrating, you know, the way that she's been playing. You know, she's been, been playing better in these last few months. But, um, you know, and, and, you know, in a way, I mean, if I can give her some advice and, and you know, because she's spoken to me and, and, I mean, you know, I'm more, more than happy to help. I remember when I was younger playing my first Grand Slam and, and, you know, playing Steffi Graf and just her, you know, giving you some advice. I mean, it, it, it just means so much coming from, um, you know, somebody that you look up to so much. So, I mean, I try to help anybody, um, but obviously when I play against them, I just try to be better on the day. But um, as soon as we step off court, um, you know, I'll still try and support them and help them if they need it. So you feel a desire to kind of help work with the younger players in general, or is it might be yeah. something? Yeah. No, I do. Um, I do like, like in that way, obviously, because you know I think with the experiences, and obviously that's something that you you can't teach somebody or or a coach can't teach you that unless you've been in those kind of situations. So I think it's you know nice to um, once in a while hear for another player, you know, that they've been through struggles the same that the player might be going through and, and it doesn't just have to be the positive things you can also share some negative things that have happened in your career and um, and probably you know they'll probably learn more from that than than just the positive things okay. any more questions in English Kim just another on a little bit on today it seemed like against Stoser you struggled it was a mental battle you pulled through and that's sort of the same thing about Venus that didn't quite find your level but at the very end it was you know you win the mental battle so today going out there you're thinking I'm really due to play well now. It's, you know, it's going to all come together. For me, and for me the difference, um, you know, Stozer, Venus, and then today was that it, it gradually, every match, I felt better. Um, and, and I think that was something that was just to me, um, just, a, just a personal improvement that I was just really trying to aim for throughout these, you know, all two weeks and, and to um, finally last week as uh, last night as well I just felt that you know even in long matches and I felt that I was hitting the ball well I was seeing the ball better I started serving better and that was just so you know comforting knowing that you know I was playing my best or better when I when I had to and um, obviously you know against Venus the tiebreaker you know I didn't have to really you know play much or, or you know bring out my best because she was making more for Sarah's but I was able to just kind of you know just even raise my level a little bit more in the third set and um, and then today kind of just went went on through from from that third set since uh, since last night I was just able to just stay very focused consistent um, kind of use the weather conditions a little bit to uh, to take that as advantage but um, yeah no obviously like I said before I mean it's to me, probably what I'm most happy with is that I was able to to raise my level at the most important times during the tournament. Last question. Excuse me, Stoser, can you talk a little bit about what she does well and, and where you see improvement? For her? Um, I think Samantha, as, as what where I see the big difference is obviously, you know, we all know that she has a great serve and a, and a great forehand, um, but physically, I think she's she's always been a fit player, but she's I think. Um, Movement-wise, she's become a lot better. I think movement-wise, she she definitely had a little bit of a of a. Um, I mean, if you have to pick one of her, her weakest, you know, uh, parts of her game, I think move, movement-wise was something where she um, could definitely still improve a lot, and she has done. So I think, you know, when I play against her, you know, I, I always try to just um, obviously, if you have a chance, open up, the, you know, the court into the forehand, and then just really try and and, and put pressure on that backhand because that just shot, you know. If you can put pressure on her, she can't really use that slice too much. And, and yeah, if you can just make her, you know, get a lot of balls back. And, uh, you know, obviously that's something that, um, again, you know, experience helps. Um, you know, obviously she's made the Grand Slam final at the French Open. But um, experience-wise, I think I have a little bit more of an advantage than, than she has. So that was definitely something that I was falling back on when I was playing against her as well. Candy? Kim, okay, a little off topic. Uh, you know something about streaks. What do you think of Esther Vidya's streak? I think it's amazing. Um, we were actually talking in the gym um, a few days ago, and um, just talking back about you know when we uh, we played in Tarba, which was an, an under 12 or an under 14 tournament, and, and she was there, um, you know, competing, and um, and you know we we started talking, and and so we kind of met for the first time there, I think, and. Um, it's just amazing to see the run that she's had, you know, talking about me, I mean, I'm nothing to <laughs> compare to the run that she's had, and, and which is um, very impressive, and, and just even, you know, how professional she takes it, and I mean, it's, um, it's, 
something that I admire very much about her. So um, I'm excited to, uh, to see her play another final tomorrow.